This presentation has been prepared to help explain Christ Church United Methodist's mission overview and mission model. The approach will be to overview what the Bible teaches about service, what Christ Church believes its mission and values, the mission transformation taking place at Christ Church. The word church in the Bible's New Testament is translated from the word ekklesia in Greek. This word comes from two root words, ek meaning out and kaleo meaning called. So it follows, the church is made up of the called out. But who are the called out? Jesus commanded his disciples to be his witness, quote, to the ends of the earth. The called out are of many different languages, races, and geographies. The children of God through faith throughout the world make up the church. This is important to remember as we set out to overview the biblical principles that support our mission overview and mission model. There is not a mission model, mission ministry, or method that we want to boast about. It is our goal to boast about Jesus. Whether we come together as church members from Christ Church United Methodist in the Woodlands, Texas, or with others called out, it is our desire to function as one body. We believe that we are part of something bigger, part of the worldwide body of Christ. The Bible teaches in Romans chapter 12, for just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ we, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. If it is giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. Each part of the body comes together to form the whole body and should not separate. Rather, we as members of the body of Christ want to work together in humble service to glorify God. When asked, of all of the commandments, which is the most important? Jesus said, the most important one is to love your God with all your mind and with all your strength, and secondly, love your neighbor as yourself. True love moves us to give God our very best and to share his love with others. When we come together for mission, we want to follow God's command to love. This includes showing love to those that we may find difficult to love. But what is love? The Bible defines love by listing attributes and actions that demonstrate love. As we reflect on the commandment to love and what it means, Put your name in the place of the word love. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not boast. Love is not proud. Love does not dishonor others. Love is not self-seeking. Love is not easily angered. Love keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. Love always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. 1 Corinthians 13. Although being the very nature of God, Jesus did not come to earth to be served, but to serve. He took on the very nature of a humble servant. Let's remind ourselves of Jesus' example of humility when we come together to serve. While Jesus gave a lifelong example of humble service, it is not always easy to follow. Jesus taught that God rewards those who humbly submit to his will. Jesus gave instruction to not grandstand, but rather to exercise humility when we give to the needy, pray, and fast. Part of this teaching is well known by many because this is where Jesus taught his disciples how to pray and recited what we today call the Lord's Prayer. Jesus said to not use a lot of words when we pray, but to pray knowing that God already knows what we need. When we fast, he said not to look somber or make it obvious to others, but only to God. 
on the topic of serving, he said to not announce it with trumpets when you give to the needy. As we strive to follow Jesus' teaching and example to be humble when we serve, pray, and fast, we can reflect on Numbers chapter 12 in the Bible. Moses is described as a very humble man, more humble than anyone else on the face of the earth. God spoke to Moses clearly, not in riddles, and met him face to face. Although Moses was not perfect through his life journey, he was able to be used by God for incredible service. Rejoice always, pray continually, and give thanks is the instruction from the Bible. A story of instruction tells of Jesus' disciples trying to drive a spirit out of a possessed boy. When they failed, Jesus drove the spirit out. In private, the disciples asked why they were unsuccessful. Jesus responded that prayer was required to drive out the spirit. A prudent question may be, are there other times that not only faith but also prayer is required? There likely are. Jesus said, if two of you on earth agree about anything they ask for, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. Another striking story with imagery about prayer comes from the Bible's last book, Revelation, that describes what is yet to come. It says, another angel who had a golden censer came and stood at the altar. He was given much incense to offer with the prayer of all of God's people on the golden altar in front of the throne. The smoke of the incense, together with the prayers of God's people, went up before God from the angel's hand. The imagery gives a vivid reminder that our prayers, along with other members of the church, rise up before God. We acknowledge the importance of prayer, and we want to ensure that we include prayer as we go about serving God and doing missions. Jesus gave to his followers what we call today the Great Commission. He said to go and make disciples of all nations, to baptize, to share his teachings. He assured them that they would not be alone, but rather he would be with them always. The Bible provides imagery to help our understanding. As God's people, we share the light of Jesus with the world. A town built on a hill with light is not hidden in the darkness of night, and neither do people light a lamp to hide it. No, they put the lamp on a stand and allow the light to fill the house. So it is to be with God's people, we are to share the light with the world. The Bible in the book of 1 Peter chapter 3 says to be ready. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect. The prophet Isaiah tells us through poetic verse why he has hope. Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary. And his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles, and they will run and not grow weary, and they will walk and not be faint. Isaiah 40. When we go on mission, we should be ready to answer, why do you have hope? Why are you here rather than someone else? Who should we serve? Orphans, widows, and the poor are mentioned throughout the Bible as the people to serve. Jesus also gave some specific examples in one of his instructional stories about who to serve. While the passage may be familiar to some, the context is striking. Jesus tells the story that at the end of the time when every man is judged, those who answered the call to serve will go on his right and the others will go to the left. For I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in, or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison, or go to visit you? The king, Jesus, will reply, Truly, I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, 
you did for me. Service can be wherever we are in life. The Spirit can move your heart. Bible study and prayer can help with awareness. God will provide the necessary talent and skills, but at the end of the day, we must make the decision and be willing to serve. The Bible character Joseph provides a good example of service and alignment with God's will during slavery, prison, and as a leader in Egypt. Job provides an example of remaining steadfast to serve and align with God's will, even as life's events cycle from good to bad. God calls imperfect people and empowers them to serve. Progress and not perfection is what God desires as we go through life's twists and turns. If we wait for the perfect opportunity, we may miss out. Dr. Dan Hannon, senior pastor at Christ Church, provided guidance to a question that you may have. How will you know that God is truly speaking to you and your service team is aligned with God's plan? Is it good? Do you have the talent and skill? Does it help people? Is it biblical? Does it humble me and glorify God? Remember always, trust and obey. If missions are to glorify God, they must be done God's way and on his timeline. When the tabernacle, the portable dwelling place for God, was to be built, God through the Spirit provided wisdom, understanding, knowledge, and all kinds of skills for the team leaders and teachers. They were given skills to make artistic designs for work in gold, silver, and bronze, to cut and set stones, to work in wood, and do all kinds of work as engravers, designers, embroiderers in yarn and fine linen, weavers, and to engage in all kinds of artistic crafts. Similarly, when Solomon had the temple built, the lead craftsman was filled with wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. We trust that God will provide necessary wisdom, understanding, knowledge, and all kinds of skills to do his good work. Serve with what? Abraham went up the mountain with his son Isaac to make an offering to God. The Lord will provide, was the answer Abraham gave Isaac when he asked, where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham had faith in God's ways and that he would provide. God did provide a ram for sacrifice that day. When Moses asked God when preparing to lead the Jews from Egypt, what if they do not believe me or listen to me and say, the Lord did not appear to you? Then the Lord said to Moses, what is that in your hand? A staff, he replied. The Lord said, throw it on the ground. Moses threw it on the ground and it became a snake and he ran from it. And the Lord said, reach out your hand and take it by the tail. So Moses reached out and took hold of the snake and it turned back into a staff in his hand. This, said the Lord, is so that they may believe that the Lord, the God of their fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has appeared to you. The widow cried out to Elijah and said, my husband is dead and now the creditor is coming to take my two boys as slaves. Elijah replied to her, tell me, what do you have in your house? She said she had only a small jar of oil. Elijah told her to go to her neighbors and ask for empty jars and to not ask for a few but many and then go into your house behind closed doors and with your sons fill the jars one at a time. She did exactly what he instructed. After every jar was filled, the oil flow stopped. She went to Elijah again. He told her to sell all the oil, pay her debts, and her sons could live on the money left over. Jesus gathered with around 4,000 people. Since they had nothing to eat, Jesus called his disciples to him, and he said, I have compassion for these people. They've already been with me three days and have nothing to eat. If I send them home hungry, they will collapse on the way, because some of them have come a long distance. His disciples answered, But where in this remote place can anyone get enough bread to feed them? How many loaves do you have? Jesus asked. Seven, they replied. He told the crowd to sit down on the ground. When he had taken the seven loaves and given thanks, he broke them and gave them to the disciples to distribute to the people, and they did so. They had a few small fish as well. He gave thanks for them also and told the disciples to distribute them. The people ate and were satisfied. Afterward, the disciples picked up seven basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over. 
In these stories, we see that God will provide. He will allow you to serve with what is in your hands. We are also reminded that God does things his way. God didn't provide the ram before Abraham went up the mountain. God didn't give Moses convincing words to deliver. God didn't have Elijah deliver money to the widow. And Jesus didn't have a merchant caravan appear with bread. No, we see that God's ways require hope that he will answer the need, faith that he can, and humble service with true love and compassion for others. In all the stories, God is glorified, not man. Let's review a successful mission, defeating the Amalekites. The Amalekites came and attacked the Israelites. The mission was to go to battle with the Amalekite army. This short story quickly takes on fantastic imagery with some great application of biblical principles. For this mission, Moses, the most humble man on earth, takes on a leadership role. He has a service vision to work with others to fight the Amalekites that have just attacked. We know that Moses was over 80 years old at the time, and Joshua was a young man, the one who would eventually replace him as the Israelites' leader. Moses told Joshua that he should choose some men, and the next day he would stand on top of the hill with the staff of God in his hands, using what was in his hands. Joshua fought the Amalekites as Moses ordered. Moses and his brother Aaron, along with one of the tribal leaders named Hur, went to the top of the hill. As long as Moses held up his hands to the throne of God, the Israelites were winning. But whenever he lowered his hands, the Amalekites were winning. When Moses grew tired, they took a stone and put it under him so he could sit on it. Aaron and Hur, one on one side, one on the other, held up Moses' hands. So Joshua and the Israelite army defeated the Amalekites. After the battle, God told Moses to write down this story as a witness for generations to come so that they would know about the blessing God provided. God also told Moses to make sure that Joshua hears all this. Wow, let's summarize. A humble man with a service vision used the staff in his hand and asked God's people to come together in mission. Each with wide ranging ages and skills were willing to come together and serve. Each did their parts, but no one was grandstanding. Moses raised his hands in prayer to God. Aaron and Hur worked together to move a stone for Moses to sit. Keep in mind, Moses couldn't lower his arms to help. Aaron held one of Moses' arms while Hur held up the other. A lot of teamwork. Joshua was on the battlefield with the army fighting. Joshua knew that Moses would be on the hill, but he didn't know that he was losing the battle when Moses' hands were lowered. He couldn't see God's whole plan at the time, but in faith he did his part and persevered, even though at times he was losing the battle. In the end, God was glorified. The mission was a success and was recorded providing encouragement for generations to come. Another mission example for review, waiting on tables. The Greek-speaking Jews complained against the Hebrews-speaking Jews because their widows were being overlooked in the daily distribution of food. So the leaders gathered together and said, it would not be right for us to neglect the ministry of the word of God in order to wait on tables. Brothers and sisters, choose seven men from among you who are known to be full of the spirit and wisdom. We will turn this responsibility over to them and give our attention to prayer and the ministry of the word. The proposal pleased the whole group, and they chose the seven. The seven were presented to the leaders, and they prayed and laid their hands on them. So the word of God spread. The number of disciples in Jerusalem increased rapidly, and a large number of priests became obedient to the faith. The leaders could have taken on more responsibility. If the leaders had taken on the work, it may have glorified their position, and they could have even been overwhelmed. Regardless, the work of spreading God's word would have been slowed. Instead, the leaders heard the need, asked for the church body to identify those with skills and willing. They then laid hands on the workers who would be waiting tables and prayed for their service. As Christians making up the body of Christ at Christ Church, we believe that Jesus is the Christ, which comes from the Greek word Christos, meaning the anointed, as in the anointed king or using the Hebrew word Messiah. We believe that God sent his son Jesus into the world as the anointed 
not to condemn, but to save. That is, Jesus, through his death and resurrection, was able to remove all that separates man from God, referred to in the Bible as darkness or sin. We believe that each man and woman must choose, after they have heard, to have faith and believe in Jesus, who he, that he, nah. I'm going to start with we believe. we believe. We believe that each man and woman must choose, after they have heard, to have faith and believe that Jesus is who he said he was, and to follow his teachings or not. This decision to believe and accept allows the believer to humbly call themselves a Christian and a member of the body of Christ. The Bible teaches that a time will come when Jesus will judge all the people of the earth. Those who have believed Jesus is the Christ and follow his teachings will have everlasting life with him in his kingdom in heaven. Christ Church has a mission, bringing, building, sending, bringing to Christ. We want to invite people to come see who Christ is and what he's all about so that they can make a decision. Building in Christ. We want to build up the body of Christ so that we can carry out his mission. Sending for Christ. We want to carry out his mission so that his kingdom comes on earth as it is in heaven. Christ Church United Methodist values. Prayer, community, serving, worship, centrality, being a part of the body of Christ that makes up the church. And we resolve to pursue ministry which aligns with our mission, be good stewards of our financial and non-financial resources, follow the spirit and intent of the United Methodist Book of Discipline, use biblical principles and scripture to guide us, continually discern God's will for Christ Church United Methodist. There is a transformation taking place at Christ Church United Methodist that's changing how we view missions. We believe that every member of the body of Christ is called to participate, sending for Christ. Jesus said, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers in his harvest field. In context, Jesus was saying that there are plenty of service opportunities, but there are not enough who are both skilled and willing. We want to increase awareness of opportunities for missions in our community, our state, our country, and around the globe. As mission awareness increases, we will want to move from staff and a few to all in church-wide service. Rather than staff and a few, every believer will participate in the harvest. Christ Church's goal is to partner with organizations outside our walls that have the infrastructure in place to serve and maintain an ongoing mission presence. Our desire is to build relationships and partnerships that will help open our eyes to the body of Christ. We truly want to identify a sufficient number of opportunities for every Christ Church believer to serve. In contrast, the goal is not to create a mission program to boast about within our church walls. Rather, we want to allow humble service through the body of Christ to be our priority. The Missions Committee is a laity group of volunteers who has a passion for missions. The team is responsible to review partners, approve partners, encourage service, resource and fund missions, and celebrate Christ Church missions. Beyond laity, there is a missions pastor that helps ensure missions committee connectivity and alignment with church staff and other church ministries. Mark your calendar. Christ Church United Methodist is, in 2015, setting apart the week after Easter, April 8th through Sunday, April 12th, for its first annual mission celebration. This five-day event is a big mission party to celebrate what God has done through the members of our church over the past year. This is a time to shine the spotlight on missions with visiting ministry partners, not to boast about a particular ministry, but to boast about Jesus and what he is doing through the body of Christ. Christ Church plans to host partner organizations and missionaries that we already support and some we hope to support. This will be a time for all to learn about the work of each organization, hear their stories, share in their victories and disappointments, and develop relationships. This will be the one and only time that Christ Church solicits annual financial commitments for missions. This funding is separate from the general budget, and it is called Faith Promise. Goals for the 2015 Mission Celebration. Vision to be enlarged. Open eyes to see the body of Christ and the opportunity to serve. 
hearts to be touched, open hearts to the Holy Spirit as it works around the world through missions, finances to be committed, receive financial commitments to support all Christ Church missions for the entire year, lives to be surrendered, receive time and service commitments to support all planned missions for the entire year. What comes next? What comes after the mission celebration? We know that God has a plan. We know that we, each as believers, have a role in this plan. To help ensure every believer at Christ Church has an opportunity to participate in mission, we believe we must organize our plan in line with God's to be good stewards of our resources and communicate the needs. There is a vision to create a mission database tool that provides electronic storage for all mission data. This tool will make it easy for the missions committee to identify volunteers who have both the skills and willingness that match well with our mission partners' needs. There is a strong belief that participation in missions will radically increase once more mission opportunities are identified and volunteers step forward making their skills known. There are key steps that will be used to support the mission model. Step one, approve mission partners. The mission application for support form allows the mission committee to document a potential mission partner's mission statement, values, guiding principles, infrastructure, and how any financial contributions would be managed. The mission committee has the responsibility to consider how the potential partner aligns with Christ Church criteria and then prayerfully considers each mission partner. The outcome of the review falls into one of three buckets. One, yes, we'll participate with the partner. Two, no thanks, this partner is not aligned with our missions and values. Or, number three, not now, we may consider this partnership later. Step two, define the need and plan the mission. After a mission partner is approved, the mission team leader works with a mission partner to create a mission plan and outcome form for each mission that is planned throughout the year. Part A of the document is the mission plan, defines the mission needs, commits resources and assigns resources. Every mission plan is reviewed and approved by the Christ Church Missions Committee before being resourced. Part B of the document captures the mission outcome, the number of people with need touched by the mission, how those with need were affected, and based on volunteer feedback, how those that served were affected. Mission outcomes are reviewed and discussed by the Christ Church Missions Committee for learnings, good stewardship, and mission celebration planning to glorify God. Step three, identify Christ Church resources. There are two forms used to identify resources. The faith promise form, which is used to identify financial resources that volunteers are willing to commit, and the volunteer skills and availability form that has been designed to identify volunteer skills and willingness, or if you prefer, comfort level with various skills. Every Christ Church member and non-member alike, from age 5 to 105, is encouraged to volunteer and participate in missions. The five-year-old may have the skills to use crayons and construction paper to send note cards to sick children in the hospital. The 105-year-old may be confined to a bed, but have it in their heart to pray with love and diligence for missions. Skill definitions are matched with the mission plan form to help ensure the mission is resourced with volunteers whose stated interests are best aligned with the mission. To clarify, for every mission there are at least four volunteers two assigned to the mission work, and two prayer warriors. We believe that there is a season for service, and this may change over years or even months. A college student, for example, may have a class schedule that changes from one semester to another. A 50-year-old that had a passion for years to work with youth may feel God's calling for a different service. The goal is to make it easy to update the volunteer skills and availability questionnaire. As new mission partners and missions are added throughout the year, additional opportunities to serve will become available. Given the questionnaire can be accessed by the missions committee using the database tool and it is up to date, volunteers may be contacted based on their stated availability with opportunities to serve. Volunteers can be assured that the needs will closely, if not perfectly, match their interests. Step four, glorify God and ensure good stewardship. 
After each mission, the volunteer feedback form is used to gather feedback that will help glorify God, better plan for future missions, and ensure good stewardship of God's resources. Volunteer Feedback Form At the end of each mission, the volunteer will finalize or have someone help them finalize a volunteer feedback form. The goal of the volunteer feedback form is to glorify God by having some proof points about why we have hope. On the other hand, it may be an opportunity to get feedback if the end of the season for this type of mission for the volunteer has come. Not every mission effort in life goes perfect. We know this, and that's okay. What we don't want is any volunteer to feel, for example, that they had too many aches and pains from heavy lifting and that they can't serve on another mission. Rather, with either an extraordinary positive or negative volunteer feedback form, we want to encourage the volunteer to adjust their volunteer skills and availability questionnaire as they ready themselves to serve on their next mission. Volunteer feedback forms from all mission participants are used to help determine how those that served on the mission were affected, how God was glorified, and if a similar mission should be resourced in the future. We trust that the mission overview and mission model provided in this presentation has clarified our beliefs about missions and our vision for the future. We hope that you will join the mission celebration to learn more about Christ Church missions and then choose to serve. We also hope that you take the steps to complete the volunteer skills and availability questionnaire and faith promise forms. It will be great to celebrate missions with you at the mission celebration in April and pray that God opens your eyes to service as part of the body of Christ. Please contact any member of the missions committee with questions and pray for our team's humble service. God commanded Moses when the Israelites were on mission in the desert. God said that Aaron and his sons should put God's name on his people using the blessings that follows. The Christ Church Mission Committee would like to pray this blessing on you as you reflect and pray about how each believer will participate in mission. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Are you ready to make your skills known and are you willing to serve? This concludes the video presentation.